Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Here is a collection of different NDE stories. I hope these stories can give you some inspiration or hope. Let's start today's story. My husband and I have been married for five years, and we have children as well. We were very happy when we just got married, but as we got along more and more, we quarreled more and more, and one thing became our divorce. Finally, I found out that he cheated. He didn't deny it after finding out. I rented a house outside myself. I don't want to stay in this house at the moment. Being with him makes me feel sick. He still lives in the former house. We had an appointment with a lawyer one morning, and the lawyer was discussing how our property should be divided. After the meeting, I drove straight to my mom's house to pick up my one-year-old son. After dinner, I was going to take my son home, and my mother asked me to stay. Because she had a bad feeling. I know now, it was a foreboding from the Holy Spirit, and I wish I had heard it at the time. I insisted on going home. I was so upset, I just wanted to be alone, then I left my son there, and when I put him in the crib, I looked at his face and thought he was peaceful. A little comfort from an unhappy marriage. I promised my mother that I would be back tomorrow after the divorce settlement was settled. She reluctantly let me go. It's only a 10 minute drive to my house. When I got home, I was going upstairs to wash up when I heard someone come in through the front door. I raised my guards and slowly went downstairs. It turned out to be my husband. I asked him why he was coming to my house, and I started to panic. The only thing I could do was to calm him down and I invited him into the living room. I went to the kitchen to make tea. This gets me thinking for at least a minute or two. I knew he wanted to talk and I sat on the kitchen chair and he sat on the edge of the sofa across from me. He wants me to come back to him and give him another chance. He gets what he did. I can't let you go. I thought to myself, God, I need your help, I can't do it. I can't forgive him for cheating. I didn't give him back. I hoped he would take a cue and leave. But he stayed. He kept apologizing and then borrowed the car. I wanted to get him out of my house, I promised to lend him a car, I asked him to pay me back on time and I was shaking when he left. Later in the night, I heard the sound of a car. I couldn't see the driver's face, but a man got out of the car, and I could see it was my husband. He walked up the front steps and I was about to lock the door when he forced his way into the house. He is holding an envelope. He strode into the kitchen and threw the envelope on the table. He yelled at me and took out the divorce papers. He scribbled his name at the bottom and yelled at me, that's what you want isn't it? I've seen him get angry before when he drinks, and that's one of the reasons we're apart. He loved torturing me mentally and physically. But this time it was more dangerous. Like someone had cast a shadow over his soul. Before I could react, he grabbed my throat and said, I'm going to kill you. I fought back violently and we all fell to the floor. I tried to pull his hand away from my neck. My baby came to my mind when I was about to pass out. I punched him with my arms and legs, my husband loosened my throat, and I was about to get up and run. He grabbed me again and threw me to the ground. I instinctively stretched out my arms to cover my face as he waved his hand towards me. He pressed me to the floor and said for the third time, I'm going to kill you. I was still fighting, but I couldn't breathe. If I couldn't break free from his grip, I'd be dead in seconds. That's when I gave up my resistance and all the panic went away. 
As I entered the darkness, I said in my heart, I'm ready, God. Then a pure and brilliant light engulfed me, and I no longer had a body. I could see all around me. I was at the center of a nothingness, but this nothingness was not empty. It was full of contentment and happiness. No words can describe where I am. God wraps me in his love, hugs me. I felt love. I never knew he loved me so much. I am surrounded by love. Embraced by the arms of the Father. I just wanted to be there forever. I told him I was finally home. He told me, you can't stay here for a while, your children need you, God gave me new life. He took me to the kitchen floor and pushed my husband away from me. Slowly, I realized that I was back in this world, lying on the kitchen floor. When I opened my eyes, I saw my husband sitting on the rug a few feet away from me. Tears streamed down his face and his hands were covered in blood. He kept repeating, what have I done? What did I do? I didn't know whose blood was on him. I didn't realize it was mine. When he saw I was alive, he slowly got up. He seemed to notice the blood on his hands for the first time. He looked at me and begged me not to call the police and he got up and left. To this day, I don't know what made him leave. I believe God forced him to leave. After my husband left, I called the police and reported what happened. My husband stabbed me in a fight. Once I recovered, my divorce was granted. My ex was arrested and charged with malicious assault, attempted murder, and several other felonies, and I am no longer afraid I faced death and all my fears were gone. I often wondered what would happen to my children if God allowed me to stay there. I thank God for letting me grow up with my children. Single mothers always live a very difficult life, but I didn't give up. I hope to give the best to my child, and I don't want him to be influenced by his father. I know the next life will be very hard, but I believe that God is always by my side.